Hey everyone, this is Jenny from Homestead Corner and I had a request for canning chicken. So today I'm going to be canning some up and a few garbanzo beans to go in there as well. So today we are canning up some chicken to get in the pantry. So we have got meat on the shelf that is shelf stable. Doesn't need the refrigerator once it's canned and you can just put it in a cool dark place and it will be just fine for a very long time. Um, all I've got here is just, I've got wide mouth uh, pint mason jars. This is what I like to use for chicken because once it is done, it's like in a big clunk and you just pour it and it pops right out. Um, you don't have to deal with the sides, you don't have to dig it out, it just falls right out of the jar and I like that it's easy like that. The next thing, um, you need some lids to go on your jars and rings. This is very basic canning really. A lot of people find meat intimidating if they haven't done it, but it is so, so simple. I'm going to use a little bit of salt. And uh, you don't want iodized salt. It can make things cloudy. They say not to can with it. I use pink salt because that's what I normally cook with. And I have a little bit of white vinegar here. So this is really simple. Uh, you want to make sure your hands are super clean. Everything is super clean. I start with cold jars, a cold canner, and cold water because that is how I do it. Um, you want everything the same temperature basically if you've got cooked meat you're going to want your jars hot your canner hot if your meat's hot but if your meat is cold then you want everything cold that way you don't get shock from the um, you don't get any shock from the um, different temperatures and it, that will bust your jars so this is really easy um, just I cut it in chunks I don't do anything fancy for this and I like to can it raw um, because our canned chicken we use it a lot casserole stir fries soups um, chicken salad all kinds of stuff like that so any big pieces of fat I kind of pull off but I don't mess the little ones are fine and I'm just gonna pop these right in the jars and we're gonna fill them up it's it's really a simple process. You want to make sure you're super clean so you don't have any issues with that. But other than that, it's really quite basic. And I'm going to pack my jars. And this is your one inch headspace, this rim. So I like to keep them right about there. And that is my chicken. I'm going to throw that one in there. They hold. A one pint jar holds about a pound of meat. Um, so, and we're just going to push those in to get as much air spaces out as possible. If there are some air spaces, that's okay. You're not going to be able to get them all out, but I'm not adding liquid to this. So, I'm just going to pack that meat right in there. And I am just going to keep going until I have enough jars filled to fill my canner because I'm doing about 40 pounds today. If I'm going to bust out the canner and do all this work, I like to go for it. So the more the merrier. <laughs> and you know, some days I do smaller batches, but if I can, I like to do the big batches. So we're just going to keep packing these jars. And you can cut pieces if you've got like a little bit more space in there. You can just cut one of your pieces a little bit smaller, kind of press it in there so it is nice and full. And or you can cut it all up in little cubes if you want. That's fine too. The little bit of fat in there does help add flavor, so we try to not not lose too much of that. I, mean, I don't like it too fatty, but. A little bit is okay. So I'm going to keep going and I will bring you back for the next step. So while I'm packing my jars, I've got a small pot with lids in it on the stove just heating up um, just on low so it'll get 
they'll get nice and warm. And I'm gonna put just some pink Himalayan salt, and I do about an eighth of a teaspoon. You can do up to a half teaspoon, but I'm not a huge salt fan. So just a little bit in the top of the jars, just to give it a little bit of flavor, but not too much. I don't like to overdo it with the salt. All right, and once we've got our salt in there, I'm gonna take a paper, clean paper towel. I'm just gonna fold it up and some white vinegar because your chicken has fat in it, obviously, and if you get salt or anything, you wanna make sure this rim is super duper clean um, so you get a good seal. If, you, if your seal fails, you have to eat it right away and you don't wanna to have to eat you know 40 pounds of chicken in a week so if you're sealed if you have one or two that your seal does fail you could pop them in the fridge and they're fine for a few days you can definitely they're all cooked when they're done and just make some soup or casserole or something that you like with it and I'm just wiping this off just to make sure um, we do not want any of that fat on there I want to make sure these are nice and clean. So I don't boil my lids or anything. I just get them, you know, hot. That's it. Not super boiling hot. None of that. Um, just so I know they're nice and clean and it kind of heats up the rubber around the ring. And I've always had good luck. That's how I was taught to can. Ball says you no, no longer have to do that with their lids. But... I just find that I get a really good seal with it and don't don't fix it if it ain't broken. So that's how, that's how I work. It's an old school way to do it, but it works for us. So these are nice and hot and I'm just gonna put my lids on. And uh, these little magnets are super handy because um, the lids are hot. All right, and then once we have our lids on, I'm just going to add a ring, and I use two fingers on each hand. Just grab the jar with two fingers and two fingers here. If you over tighten these down, this lid can kind of buckle like a little tent, and you're not going to get a seal. So you don't want them over tight. So I just do two fingers, and this is ready to go in the canner. So I'm going to start just getting my lids on and popping them in the can. Okay, so I've got my canner all filled up and I'm going to turn this on high to get it get it heated up. In the bottom, I have about two, three quarts of water. Um, what you definitely want to go by whatever your pressure canner um, manual says. If your canner didn't come with a manual, you can look it up online and find out how much water you should put in there. And the only thing I add right now is just some white vinegar, um, just a little bit. It just helps so your jars aren't cloudy if you've got hard water. So this is an all-American canner, and there's no rubber gasket, so it's metal to metal to seal. So I'm going to take just a little bit of olive oil and rub it on the beveled edge where the canner sits together. And I do this every time I can with this canner. And then... We're just going to set this down and I am going to let this go until I hear and once it's steaming we're going to see some steam let's see if I can bring you up here there's a little vent here we're going to see steam come out of here and once it's steaming I'm going to time it for 10 minutes and then I will bring you back so just make sure these are nice and tight. Okay, so we have got steam coming out of the vent. I don't think you can see it on camera, but it is just pouring right out of there. And it's been going for about 10 minutes, so I always like to time that because that is part of the processing time. And then because of my elevation, I'm going to add my weight at 10 pounds. Check your elevation to make sure of your weight. And then we are going to let this come up to pressure over here. We're going to let it come up to 10 pounds, and this should start jiggling at 10 okay, pounds. Okay, so you can see the 
scanner is up to 10 pounds and the weight is jiggling nicely and moving around. I'm gonna set my timer for 75 minutes and process this chicken. And when it comes out, it's gonna be completely cooked and ready to go on the shelf once it cools. Okay, so once the timer goes off and it's processed for 75 minutes, I am just gonna turn my burner off and I'm gonna let this sit until it comes completely down to pressure. I want this to come all the way down to zero before I do anything to it. So I'm not gonna touch this until it's completely down to zero. I'm gonna leave the weight on. We're just gonna let it cool down on its own. Okay, so my first canner load of chicken is cooling down and we're getting ready to put the second load in. I don't have enough jars to fill the canner. So what I do is I don't want any wasted space in there. I want my canner to be full. If I'm gonna use fuel, I'm gonna fill that canner. So I ran and grabbed a little bit of garbanzo beans and you can do this the exact same way with any kind of beans you have kidney beans, black beans, black eyed peas, whatever, any kind of beans this is gonna work for. So I measured out two cups cause I need four more jars to fill my canner. And this gives me quick, easy beans. Um, just like the beans you buy in the jar at the store, in the can. So I'm just gonna take these and give these a quick rinse. And I want these to be nice and clean. So I'm just going to move them around, just give them a quick rinse, get anything off them. And I'm going to save that water. You can put that water right in the garden, so that dirty water, good for your plants. Um, I'm just going to get my beans and we're going to put these in jars so our canner is full because beans and meat can for the same time, so same pressure. Once I have my beans all rinsed. I'm gonna take about a half a cup, a heavy half cup for garbanzo beans, but you don't wanna overdo it with your beans because they will, um, they expand in the jar. So um, about a half a cup per pint or a whole cup if you're doing quart jars. And I just wanna kind of spread these out even. And this really, I mean, instead of wasting space and all that, you want to, you want to, you know, maximize everything so it's less work. And this only takes a minute if you don't have enough jars of meat. I decided to take, uh, save 10 pounds out so I could can stew and curry also. So that's just why I didn't have enough jars. I had... I have more than enough meat to fill the can and I just, I want to use some for something else. So I have got my bean, my chickpeas in here and I like to add a little bit of minced onion to each jar, just give them a little flavor because I, you can add these to soups, stews, whatever. Um, and you can do these plain, you don't have to add these seasoning. Some hummus. There, there it is, it came to me. All right, so I've got some garlic in here and some onion in here. You don't want to overdo it with your seasonings. In canning, it's better to have too little than too much because some seasonings when you're canning will be, um, they intensify when you can it. So you want to be careful of that. And then I'm just going to fill up with filtered water to my one inch of head space. So this really just takes a couple of minutes to throw this together and then you're off. Okay, so beans sometimes have a bunch of bubbles. You wanna make sure that you're debubbling these. Skewer, Tupperware peeler, whatever you got. Something in there, plastic or wood. I don't like to put metal in there, but I don't wanna break your jar. So I just move everything around. You don't have to get too crazy with it. And it doesn't look like much, but these are gonna swell right up and these beans are older, so they may not swell quite as high. That's okay. We got it all debubbled. And just like the chicken, I'm gonna use some white vinegar and just wipe my rim. And you can add salt to these if you like. I don't like salt in this, so I don't add it. A lot of people do. And then 
I did, I have a couple of regular lids, but I had two tattler, lid, tattler lids that I thought I would show you uh, how to use them. They're really simple and easy. Okay, so the tattler lids are reusable and they're plastic. And they come with a little rubber ring. And these work great. Um, my mom uses these and she gave me a few sets of them to try. And so this is reusable like 10 times for this ring, they say. I would say as long as this is in good condition, it's gonna work. So it's just a little plastic lid. And when it seals, it's gonna suck down in the middle, just like your metal lids. So, um, so we're just gonna, we put the ring on and then we put the plastic tattler and then we're gonna add a ring and we're gonna tighten it the same way. We're just finger tight and that's ready to go in the canner. And again, and I heat these rubber rings up just so they're nice and pliable. I put them right in with the regular lids and we're gonna put these right on there and put our lid or some people will take it and put it on here and then kind of put it on like that. I mean, whatever works, I usually just lay it on top and stick the lid on. And again, just finger tight like our other jars. And these are ready to go. So now my canner will be full and I'm gonna process this exactly like I just processed the chicken um, in the canner. So these are gonna go in and we're gonna just get the canner heated up and same thing, can, 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 get that pantry full. Okay, so once this is down to zero pounds of pressure, you can see on the gauge, then I'm gonna remove my weight and I'm just gonna pull that off and let the steam come out for about five minutes and just make sure all that's out of there before I open up the can. So I'm pulling my chicken out of the canner and we had a casualty. The jar sheared right off. Uh, this happens once in a while. Um, I, it's maybe the third time out of many years of canning, but the jar came right, it just busted right off. So, so that is it for canning chicken and beans. I mean, they're both really simple to do and they are not hard at all. They're super easy. On the tattler lids, the only thing different that I do, when I take the rest of these out of the canner, I just set them on the counter and some of the rings are a little bit loose and that's okay. I do not touch them. But the tattler lids, you have to crank these down and make them just as tight as you can once you pull them out of the canner so they can seal and suck the centers down in. So that's the only difference with the tattler, but these are reusable over and over. They say 10 times on the rings. So, and I'm sure you could stretch it a little longer than that, as long as the rings are still in good shape. And that's it, easy peasy. And that's it, if you like this video, Give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.